Hello guys and gals, my name is Daniel, 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 and welcome to another episode of Squad Morale Restored. Today we're going to be continuing our short series, um, looking at my latest project or ongoing side project, which is the um, Reaver Titan. Um, we've already done one video um, looking at the, trying to think what arm, the Gatling Blaster arm. Um, today we are going to be looking at the missile launcher, the Apocalypse missile launcher, um, and seeing whether this has been produced and cast to the exacting standards of which I'm slowly getting f used to Forge World doing. We've had three videos so far. What's that? Dust? Dust? We've had three videos so far where there's been nothing at all wrong, and for those of you who are long-term users of Forge World, that is quite odd. Um, most of the companies you would expect to have products which are perfect or very rarely exhibiting any kind of defects, but us longer, longer, longer people, us longer serving people will uh, fight, fight the cardboard. <coughs> Take two. As longer serving people, no better. Okay. Just can't open the fight into the box. Okay, so let us see what we've got in here. So this is the Apocalypse missile launcher. We have our rattling noise in the background. And we have a fairly ah, fairly simple um design which is uh, on photocopy paper so i'll hold it still if anyone wants to freeze frame and have a quick look to see what you get it looks like it only comes in one two three four five six seven components and this one has been checked by cr and i'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to be and so the 13th of december oh dear so, uh, 13th of December 2001 or oh, quite a long time that is what 19 18 then they're having a laugh right so being checked by whoever the CR fella is we've got a bubble wrapped packet and a Ford World zippy zippy bag and bubble wrap Hey, right in goes the wrap. I think that's just there to pad out the box. Okay, so let's we'll have a look at. Blame that's heavy. <laughs> we'll have a look at that in a second. That is impressively weighty. So let's have a look at these smaller sections now. At the moment, this I think is um, going at retail sixty sixty eight pounds. So it's not cheap but i do think it's just had the price rise or fairly recently the price rise so if you were got taken by taken by surprise if you got taken by surprise by the price rise at the beginning of july then you have my sympathies because so was i um it went up a lot quicker than i expected um anyway let's have a look at these parts so these are the exhaust vents Hold on, turn the right way up. Exhaust vents. There we go, lovely, it's in focus. Um, nothing, no problem so far. A little bit of extra, a bit of overspill there of the resin. Nothing of any note. Okay, we've lost a little bit of design there. So that just needs a little bit of filling, so not a big job. As I say, now to vote. Um, but it's a bit of a shame because unless that's actually hidden, that actual part might be hidden. But yeah. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Nothing else to it. about. Odd sort of gate. So probably saw through that bit. Definitely worthwhile getting a. Um, a modelling saw, a bit like a hacksaw, um, but whatever you do, make sure you saw outdoors, or at least wear a proper mask. 
Um, because any any kind of song particularly will produce a lot of dust and it's nasty stuff. Okay, and then I'm trying to get this off there. Probably snip it down on um, use a knife to cut it free, and then maybe a bit of sanding. Again, same kind of caveat with sanding. Make sure you are doing that outside. Right, now we have the warheads. Now, I believe there's 20. Let's have a quick look. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 20. We've got 20 um, chambers or missile launcher tubes. And we have 20 warheads. So you can put in as many or as few as you want. <laughs> There's actually more um, resin on the gate part than there is on the sprue, on the uh, the parts. Okay, they look fine. Again, they look spiftastic. Oh, is there a date on this? No, it's just a game's work. Okay, last one. What's not? Second off last one. Nothing wrong there. Not sure what this scratchy bit Oops, not sure what this scratchy malarkey is about. But nothing like that, nothing like that. And now I can't remember which one I dropped. Let's have a look at both of these. Yes, nothing at all wrong there. Yep, both fine. So now we have wow, that is one substantial actually what is this called? Oh, the mount. All right, that's fair enough. Okay, this is one substantial launcher mount, and as you may suspect, that's nice and smooth. It looks kind of rough, but it feels. Okay, so we've got a bit of the mould there, a little bit of green, kind of light turquoise green stuff there, turquoise. Turquoise, turquoise, turquoise. Uh, if anyone wants to have a go at pronouncing that particular shade of bluey green, let us know in the comments, please. All right, so we've got some hideous run over of the mold there. That's going to be a bit of a faff to clean up. Probably have to, whoop, probably have to scratch some of that out. Not massively complaining. Uh, and again, we've got it inside there as well. It doesn't look overly grand. Um, probably fairly. Oops. Probably fairly easy to clean up. But in principle, it's going to be a bit of a bit of a pain with it being stuck in there. But not too bad. So a bit of a downer there. Um, bit of a downer, but I'm sure that'll clean up fairly easily. Well, fairly straightforwardly. Right, so they are the main parts. Um, let us get the wow, blimey, this is like a paperweight. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. The size of this thing. Um, I've now actually seen. A Titan in real life. Um, that is one hunk of resin. The table shaker. Um, and that is ridiculously huge. Um, ready for a game of um, Apocalypse, I suppose. Crikey. Um, right, stop admiring it. Right, let us check out the details. So it's a little bit muggy. It uh, needs a wash, which of course they always, always give them a good wash and a bit of detergent, fairy liquid, something like that. Um, you can get stronger detergents if you want. Um, I generally find you get very similar results, um, unless you've got a particularly greasy looking one. I, just, I think just a household dishwashing kind of liquid is probably sufficient. Okay, 
So we've got fairly decent crisp edging. Now this is definitely an old mold. This hasn't been, it's not a 3D created mold by any stretch of the imagination. Wow. We're not gonna come up against that. Blimey. But this, it's a pretty much <laughs> a little bit shorter than a rhino. And by the time we put this component on the back, hold on, we're going that way up, I suspect. By the time you put that component on the back, you are looking at something definitely rhino sized. So let's have a quick tour around the outside. Um, Okay, so we've got little tiny air bubbly type things on the underside of that. Again, nothing to write home about. Needs a little bit of filling on the edge there. Oh, you could probably keep it and paint it up as battle damage. Um, after all these things are supposed to be thousands of years old. Well, it depends if you're going to do horse heresy or 40k, but little dings here and there sort of add to a bit of character. Or oh, laziness, uh, depending on your point of view. I can't see any other flaws. I am actually cast in like two or three pieces. As I expected. The top part to be one piece, the bottom part to be a piece, and then we'd have this that would slot into the front of it. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, so only problems, well, minor issues is just like a little bit clean on the inside, which is nothing to worry about. A little bit of clean up do there, possibly a tiny bit of filling. I mean, seriously, that's really, really good uh, casted, casted, a really good, uh, well cast piece. Um, okay, so definitely looking forward to putting this whole and great thing together. Um, our next video, I'm hoping to have the third gun arm ready. Um, yeah, so third arm that's coming up, I'm thinking of the laser weapon. Um, I like the stats on the Inferno gun but I'm not totally keen on the design so I'm making a an aesthetic choice rather than a, a gaming choice um, but also it harkens back to the olden days of Epic 40k um, I used to field um, Reaver Titans rather than Warlord Titans and they would sort of rock up onto the battlefield with three turbo lasers um, one on the carapace and two on each arm well one on each arm um, so, after all this time, saving up to purchase um, an actual full size, not enough full size, but you know what I mean, um, is going to be a little, a little dream come true. Okay. What I'd love to know from you guys is, do you have any kind of dream models that um, you can would love to get it, but uh, like saving up or have decided that your price range, at least for now. Um, is it mainly Titans you're interested in, or would you like to sort of feel things like the Death Corps of Krieg? So it's like more of an infantry thing, but you would wait to save up enough to buy them before Forge World ditches them all together. Um, please let me know in the comments. As always, I will read anything that you've got to write. If you can take the time to write it, I will take the time to read it. Um, so until next time, guys, happy hobbying, and we will see you then.